Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. Leading military civilian and contractor personnel responsible for developing Air Force cybersecurity policy and strategy is Chief Information Security Officer Wanda Jones-Heath. Throughout her 30-year civilian career in the government, Jones-Heath has held positions throughout the D.C. area and at air bases in Germany with IT. She spoke to us at our State of Cyber CXO Tech Forum in July 2019 about securing the nation's supply chain. We recently caught up with her again to learn more about her background and how she came to this prominent role in the Air Force. This episode is sponsored by Dell Technologies and ID Technologies. Hi, I'm Andy McCullough, Regional Sales Director for the Air Force at Dell Technologies. IT leaders in the federal government are increasingly raising issues of infrastructure, enterprise, architecture systems, automation needs, and more. And Dell Technologies is listening and acting. As a technology partner of the U.S. Air Force, Dell Technologies has worked closely with Air Force Chief Information Security Officer Wanda jones Heat and other leadership to support and enable their missions. Whether it's supporting the F-35 program, multiple weapons systems, the distributed ground station, Kessel Run, or Kobayashi Maru, to name a few, Dell Technologies is proud to support and assist in the United States Air Force transformational journey. We're excited to hear from Ms. Jones-Heath about the cybersecurity advancements the Air Force has made, how they've approached cross-agency partnerships, and what to look out for in the future. Wanda, thanks so much for joining us on GovCast today. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about my career. It's certainly a journey. So what got you interested in computer science? I've always loved computers starting in the seventh grade. I was one of those kids that was fascinated with the computers back then that you hook up to your TV. I loved math, anything where I had to think about and program. So from seventh grade, I knew I wanted to major in computer science. Wow. And do you think your strong interest in that really led you to this current position? I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm in the information and technology curriculum. And because of the love of the sciences, the math, it's definitely led me right to this position. And in some of my past positions, the analytical skills was very appropriate for the type of positions I've held. Do you think things like STEM in education is really important to kind of getting the next generation of IT leaders in government? Oh, absolutely. That is one of my passions, talking to young people, specifically young women, about the STEM career, some of the things that I've been able to do and see because of my STEM background. We need to continue that because we just don't have enough women, enough people to fill the most important and critical positions throughout the government as well as industry. Especially with cybersecurity, that's one of the areas where even women don't have a lot of representation. Oh, yes. You know, not many women. I call myself a unicorn because <laughs> I am in a senior position in a career field that is dominated by men. So I pride myself in bringing my skills to the table in everything I do. So what security challenges are unique to the Air Force, in your opinion? I don't think they're really unique. What I've found throughout my time in this position and in past positions, we're all dealing with the same problem set. How we attack the problem set is the difference. Being in the government, we do have a hierarchy that demands that we coordinate across the Air Force, the entire enterprise, and across the DOD. Federal agencies have the same challenges. Industry, same challenges, but the way they achieve their success in achieving their actions is different because they may own the space. We're non for profit. So we have the mission of the Air Force and not necessarily the mission of a board or a organization that is funded differently. So you've actually been at the Defense Department for quite a long time. Considering the Air Force, is there any collaboration with the other branches? And if there is, how are you guys looking through tackling some of the cybersecurity challenges together? Oh, absolutely. 30-year service all as a civilian 
and with the Air Force and a few other agencies, we absolutely have great partnerships with our sister services as well as DOD. I also pride myself in collaborating outside of the DOD. As I mentioned earlier, we have the same challenges and a lot of times I will look for solutions or opportunities to partnership because we do have the same challenges with less resources. So last year, I don't know if you remember, but you actually spoke at one of our CXO tech forums during our State of Cyber event. And so uh, once we saw the reports and saw the indicators, um, then the Air Force stood up and said we wanted to do the same thing. Unlike um, um, Adrian's um, approach, I don't have internal testers. And so we use the bug bounty model crowdsourcing to be able to um, use that uh, particular capability. And we've done um, one, two, and three over the last probably four years. Um, we found a lot of success. The trends, um, we, we know that we have some issues and we fix those. And you mentioned about um, having the continuous monitoring. That's another piece that we are focused on because we know that you fix it once. Um, or you say you fix it, um, we, we want to make sure you do fix it. And so we do have a continuous monitoring uh, capability that we are deploying across the Air Force down to the program level um, to where we can now see. Um, I actually have a dashboard um, for all of the uh, capabilities, and I can see down to the program level. Um, through the portfolios um, of where we are, what, what is your security posture, what's your profile. So we are using the, those tools as well as bug bounties to be able to stay ahead of the adversary. And you talked about how the Air Force is using bug bounties. How are those going? Oh, still very much so a part of the approach for cybersecurity. What we found is it is a surefire way to really understand how a system or application is architected and using those type of tools to help us pinpoint our gaps quickly is something we continue to do throughout the enterprise. Now, taking into account this current pandemic, telework has been huge. Obviously, that's why we're talking like this today. Have you seen any new challenges along those lines with remote work? Just a few. Because this was such a quick response to standing up our telework capability. We did have to do some different architectural things to our network to make sure that we're able to have the capability up and running and available to a mass amount of employees. Before the pandemic, we did have the capability in place, but because we went from, you know, what I say zero to a hundred, to provide that capability, it did require a different thought of how do we now continue to do the mission of the Air Force in a different <laughs> and digital environment, you know, from teleconferencing to Zoom meetings to providing that capability from different avenues, mobile, desktop, government equipment, personal equipment. And so one of the things we had to do was definitely look at our policies look at our infrastructure, look at our VPNs. So this pandemic really pushed us to actually become more efficient. And do you see this maybe lasting post the pandemic with maybe increased telework or other cybersecurity concerns that you might be adapting to? Oh, absolutely. We cannot go back to the way we did business. We've proven that we can do business in a different manner. Post-COVID, I do anticipate that we will continue to have a footprint outside of our traditional bases in the Pentagon. And thinking about maybe automation, how are you exploring technologies and automation to further security missions? We were already going down that road. This just gave us a opportunity to move a little faster. We were already going towards the network we need making cybersecurity part of the process up front and doing the planning. So we were already moving in this direction, having a user forum to better understand the impacts of the network, ensuring that we have the performance that is desired to continue to do the mission of the Air Force. So this path was already set. It just speeded up a little bit. 
So because you've been at the Defense Department for so long, are there any notable changes that you've observed over the years technology wise? Obviously, technology changes so fast. But I'm curious, from your point of view, some of the things that you've observed. Um, One thing is the senior leadership understands that we have to think about everything we do from an enterprise perspective. It is no longer an Air Force or a Army. It is a true collaboration and partnership. Senior leadership is more flexible when it comes to being great partners across the services, as well as with industry. We depend on industry. Their networks is just an extension, and they should also have the same cybersecurity posture, the same usability metrics and capability. So as we go into a digital framework across the DOD, we change just like the industry does. And so having leadership that is in tune with what is going on in industry certainly is a plus for the DOD and Air Force. Changing just as industry does is really interesting, especially when you consider some of the, um, I guess, roadblocks that being a government agency presents. So that's really interesting. Do you think organizations like Kessel Run are really moving that needle? Oh, absolutely. Things like Kessel Run and the entire set ops approach is definitely from a industry lens and support. I would say the same thing from a bug bounty using that as a tool. Five years ago, you never would have thought that the government would go in that direction to hire outside hackers to show us some of our gaps. So thinking ahead in the future, what are some of the priorities that you anticipate to be tackling? From a cybersecurity perspective is ensuring that we continue our partnership with our acquisition community. During the development phase, we must incorporate cybersecurity up front. We can no longer afford to bolt it on. So continuing down that path as we streamline our applications and systems going to the cloud, building that framework, looking at risk management in its totality from planning to development to execution is certainly part of our approach. And continuing to partner with our industry defense partners is definitely in the top four or five. So what are some of the ways you're looking to kind of develop those partnerships? I know things like Kessel Run are seen as such a leading organization across government, and they're really influencing a lot of other agencies as far as how they even approach DevOps, for example. So how do you see those partnerships maturing? We have great partnerships with our industry POCs. They participate in a lot of our meetings. You know, most of our staff also have our contract support in place. And we lean on those partnerships to move the Air Force forward. You know, we participate in a lot of forums that are sponsored by industry partners for that reason, to learn more about what they're doing. How can we incorporate that into our planning process? And just watching the way technology changes, the way we are doing specific development opportunities as well. So we continue to find ways to partner with industry and they do the same as well. We meet with industry partners through our CITO to find out what is going on from a technical standpoint in the community. What are some things you're looking forward to in the future, whether that's emerging technologies like quantum computing or other things? Is there anything on the horizon that excite you? AI and um, RPA, finding ways to incorporate technology and streamline our processes. Things where we can remove some of our human interactions is something that's right on the forefront. And so we'll be watching that. Our director of innovation is definitely pushing us in directions that we've never seen before in Air Force. And so all those partnerships that she's building in the community is definitely helpful in how we continue to move and become a true digital Air Force. Well, that's about all the questions I had, but that was a great snapshot into the Air Force. I actually spoke with Chief Software Officer Nicholas Shalon a while ago. I got to get a little bit of insight into his whole thing with the DevOps and DevSecOps. So 
everything's been really interesting. I'm always looking forward to talking with people from your team. So thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, you're welcome. And, you know, uh, Nick is a great partner. He's helping us drive a huge approach in the deck sale ops area. So, and it's going great. We are finding out that we can do it. You can. (laughs) All right, Wanda. Well, thank you so much. This was a great conversation. I'm looking forward to maybe catching up on some of your priorities in the future. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks again for support from our sponsors, Dell Technologies and ID Technologies. I'm Dylan Connor, the CTO at ID Technologies. At ID, we are proud to be delivering game-changing cybersecurity solutions in partnership with Dell Technologies. We look forward to continuing to support the mission-critical systems of the U.S. Air Force and being a part of delivering high-impact solutions for IT modernization within the Air Force and the rest of the Department of Defense. For more information about how we're working with agencies like the U.S. Air Force, check out idtech.com. GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com. (laughs) 